What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi, board certified psychiatrist. Welcome back to the channel and happy new year. If you're new to this community and you wanna learn more about it, I encourage you to check out the site. I encourage you to go through the videos. There's a lot of good content on there. And I'd love to make you a member of this community because I feel like what we're doing here has a lot of value and will help increase your mental health literacy and help you make better decisions as a patient or doctor or whatever you're doing with your life. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for all the love and support. So I wanted to make this video about a week ago, but I got caught up celebrating the holidays, doing things with friends and family, and I just really didn't get to it. And I also wanted to give myself the opportunity to read the book before commenting on this documentary. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you should go to Netflix right now and watch the documentary Stutz, which was written and directed by Jonah Hill a famous actor who was receiving therapy from Phil Stutz, a psychotherapist in California. So this is an interesting kind of mental health documentary that I wanted to do some commentary on because I think it's really important and highlighted some really good points. Now, Stutz chronicles Jonah Hill's journey through psychotherapy, and it also chronicles his friendship with this psychotherapist, Phil Stutz. He is the co-author of a book called The Tools, and I did have a chance to read the book, and that's one of the reasons why I didn't want to comment on this right away, was I wanted to get the chance to read this book. I did purchase the book with my own money, nobody gave it to me for free, so I bought it, I read it, and I can give you some additional insights from that. Now, this documentary was designed to kind of celebrate the teachings of Dr. Stutz and really to celebrate psychotherapy as an intervention for anyone dealing with mental health conditions. Personally, I don't know how practical this information is for most people, but it did highlight one very important factor in psychotherapy and one that might be the most influential factor in whether or not somebody who is getting psychotherapy is going to get better or get worse. So the topic of today's video is the documentary entitled Stutz from Netflix. Let's get right into all the details here. Let's talk first about the therapeutic alliance and why it's so important. A wise man once told me that I should lead with my best material, and I think from this documentary, this is the part that really stood out to me as the best material and the material that might be most useful for both a patient or someone who's a practicing physician or therapist. Now, the documentary raises tons of questions, lots of questions for me as someone who has both performed psychotherapy and received psychotherapy in my training. So I've played both, I've played both roles. I've been the therapist on one hand, I've also been the person receiving the therapy. And time and time again, we see one thing that's a common factor. We call these common factors, but there's one common theme in psychotherapy that seems to determine whether or not someone gets better. It doesn't really matter if you're trained in CBT or you're trained in psychodynamic psychotherapy. The technique doesn't seem to matter as much as the therapeutic alliance. So the therapeutic alliance is essentially a working relationship that you as the therapist have with the patient. And this allows the work of therapy to occur in the scheduled time frame, right? This allows you to, to work on established goals of therapy together in a collaborative fashion. Now, if there's a poor therapeutic alliance, obviously outcomes are going to be poor. So in layman's terms, what this means to me, what this comes down to is, it means how much do I like the person I'm working with for therapy? How much do I trust that they have my best interest in mind? And how comfortable do I feel opening up and talking to them about very uncomfortable things? So that's really, to me, what the therapeutic alliance is. When we like someone, we feel good talking to them, right? If I like somebody, I, I open up, I'm more animated, I'm more excited to see them every week. I'm going to feel better regardless of what type of techniques are being used in therapy. Now, research has also suggested that the quality of that relationship is a reliable predictor of positive clinical outcomes. Could you imagine that? Your outcomes in therapy are not determined by the skill set really of the therapist necessarily. It's more so determined by the personality of the therapist and whether or not you have a good therapeutic alliance with your patient. So this is a predictor that's independent of the psychotherapy approach used. And this has been proven in randomized controlled trials and the research literature time and time again. I remember in training hearing one of my psychotherapy preceptors make similar statements. Um, essentially, Jonah Hill did a really nice job of demonstrating how powerful therapeutic alliance can be 
in this film. And I think that's really where this film shines in my mind is it shows how important that relationship is, how important a good therapeutic alliance is, and how it can really have profound impacts on someone's mental health. For me, that was the big takeaway. Considering Stutz is not a traditional psychotherapist, he does not perform psychotherapy the way you would be taught in a residency program, for example, and he rejects many of the things I would consider important in psychotherapy. And that's going to be the topic of the next sections in this video. What makes Dr. Stutz a great therapist? Now, there's a lot to like about this guy. Honestly, he's a very likable individual. So it's difficult for me to make a blanket statement about how good of a therapist Dr. Stutz is. For Hill, clearly he was helpful, right? He helped him process some very difficult work, including making peace with his brother's untimely death, as well as working on self-esteem and body image, which was very important to Jonah in this documentary. Stutz is honest, right? What you can see in this documentary is conveyed very well, is he's a very honest person, he's a very warm person, he is a very empathetic person during his encounters with Hill, right? During these encounters, you can, you can feel it. You can sense the warmth, the empathy, the understanding, the, 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 the true, genuine interest in what Jonah Hill has to say. He knows how to push sensitive buttons, so he pushes sensitive buttons in a playful manner. It's, there, there's a lightheartedness associated with the type of therapy that he's delivering, and that can help establish a strong therapeutic alliance. These are things that aspiring psychotherapists can and should use. You should be aware of this. If you want to be a good psychotherapist, watch some of the ways that Stutz works in these videos with Hill because it will really help you to understand ways that you could work with patients and form that strong therapeutic alliance like he does. You will, find, you will not find a whole lot of evidence, though, for the approaches that he uses. So even in his book, like I said, I have his book here, The Tools, that I read through, these are not traditional like cognitive behavioral therapy techniques. These are sort of like his own techniques that he developed over years of clinical practice, which is great. That's really awesome. But he does reject scientific tradition of empirical testing of his tools. Like he does not, there's not a whole lot of literature out there about the tools that he wrote about in this book. So what he does is far more art than science, in my opinion. What about some things that are not so good about the way Stutz delivers his therapy? So there's many things to like about this guy, like I said, but there's also things that, I, that concern me. Like I pointed out in the previous section, a lack of empirical evidence for the tools that he is using, and maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe the therapeutic alliance alone is enough. But when you start psychotherapy with a patient, you want to establish a therapeutic framework, right? You want to have a therapeutic framework where the work of psychotherapy is going to be carried out. While I believe there's a loose framework established in this film, it doesn't appear to be well developed. So they don't develop that proper framework from the beginning, which can be problematic, especially if you're a newer therapist trying to, trying to learn and trying to figure out what kind of therapy you're going to be delivering. This opens the door for what I would call boundary crossing. And you see a lot of that in this documentary, in my opinion. There's a lot of boundaries that are crossed, personal boundaries, openness about, you know, personal relationships. For example, Stutz was at one point talking about his, why his relationship with his significant other didn't work out with Hill. Not really something you would want to talk about with your patient necessarily, unless you felt like it was going to benefit the patient, in which case you might bring it up if you feel like there's some lesson that you learned that the person also needs to learn. But in many cases, these things are not useful to bring up in therapy, and they are what I would consider boundary crossing. So you might not even be aware that it's occurring because the frame of therapy is so weak that you don't even realize you're crossing the line when you're crossing it all the time. So maybe that's part of the therapy that Stutz delivers. Maybe that's just him not having a good frame. I don't know, but it's dangerous. And it can be dangerous, especially for new people who are learning to be therapists. He also relies on these self-developed tools. Like I said, they're not validated by any evidence. They don't, uh, it's basically he's giving the appearance of being an authority figure, laying down these quote unquote tools to the patient. And he's mostly giving out a lot of advice as well, which is another thing we don't necessarily want to do. It, advice can be useful. It can be supportive in certain settings in psychotherapy. But most patients will not follow advice alone. 
most patients are going to reject advice and probably do the complete opposite. I mean, many times in my training, I had that experience where I would give a piece of advice and the person would do the complete opposite thing. So you have to be careful not to give too much advice. It's not entirely bad. I'm not saying it might not work for some people, but what I'm saying in the case of watching Stutz therapy is that for most people, unless you share the same feelings for the therapist that Jonah Hill clearly shares, you may not get the same value that he got out of this type of psychotherapy. Therapist reputation and outcome. Sometimes in circles, a therapist will develop a reputation as being a good quality therapist, and people will want to come to that person just because of their reputation. Now, clearly in celebrity circles, Stutz has that reputation. He is known as the person who fixes things for these privileged individuals. When a new patient comes in like Jonah Hill did, there's already a belief in this person. There's a belief that this person has access to special knowledge and that they're going to share that knowledge and skill with you as a patient and that you must abide by it without question, which is part of what we see here. Like I said, he almost comes off as an authoritarian type of figure who is giving these tools and as long as you follow the tools, you'll be fine. If you don't follow the tools, well then you know what happens, right? So, when someone comes in with that established belief that, the, that this person is going to help me, they have special knowledge, and if I just follow it, I'm going to get better, then you're already starting from a good point as the therapist because you don't have to worry. The person's probably going to get better. They think they're going to get better. I don't think the tools that were presented in this book or film were groundbreaking in any way. I think they were kind of traditional psychotherapy, mindfulness techniques that you know, I've seen in other places worded slightly different, organized slightly different, but with the same general themes, right? These themes are not new to psychotherapy. In the film, Stutz's words have almost like a godlike quality, right? And there's full buy-in clearly from Hill as the patient, which is part of the reason why he felt like the work they did was so transformational, I think, in my opinion at least. His work felt transformational because he believed in it. He believed in everything that Stutz was teaching. He believed that Stutz had that special knowledge and was going to help him with his tools. While his tools are developed from clinical practice, right? That's clear. It's not, it's not like he just made these things up out of nowhere. He's developed them from working with patients in the clinical setting. They're really not validated scientifically, as I've stated before. In place of science, what we get is charisma. So instead of the person being, you know, giving an evidence-based scientific treatment, he's ultimately providing his charismatic therapist. He's, he's, he is the charismatic individual, and he's asking you to put full faith in the program, despite it not being validated scientifically. For some, this approach clearly works, right? If you buy into it, if you, if you like the, the person, if you have that strong therapeutic alliance, but it's not because the tools are any better than any other techniques out there for psychotherapy. So people aren't getting better just because of these special tools that he uses. People are getting better because they believe in the therapists and they enjoy the charisma that this individual has. What about having a therapist as your friend? Because clearly in this documentary, Stutz was Jonah Hill's friend uh, above all else, right? He was his therapist. He helped him do things, but he also was his friend. He actually like a friend. He, he engaged Hill like a friend. Now, I don't personally believe this is ever a good idea. It's never a good idea to be friends with your patients. And these there's ethical principles at play here, and there's reasons why they tell you that you can't accept gifts from patients, right? You can't accept things of monetary value. You shouldn't hang out with your patients outside of the assigned appointment times. You shouldn't go to the bar and have a beer with your patient. These are kind of, again, boundary crossings and maybe even boundary violations, depending on how you think about it and, and how severe you would consider these things. And, you know, the reasons why they tell us you should never have a romantic relationship with a patient, even if it's a former patient that you haven't seen in 15 years. It's just not a good thing. Relationships with patients outside of the therapeutic work and the therapeutic framework, rather, and the work that's being done is not a good idea. Yes, in the case of this film, it all worked out happily ever after, right? Jonah Hill's better. He feels better about his life, you know, and if that's what you want to believe, that's fine. But it didn't seem to me that Hill had fully come to terms with his past anyway. He was still kind of talking about 
those difficulties and those struggles. So it wasn't like the therapy cured him of his problems. It helped him to process them better. It helped him to live with them a little more effectively. But I'm not sure he was cured of anything at the end of the documentary as we saw. He, he still seemed vulnerable and maybe even worse off because now he's come to depend on this friendship or relationship with Stutz. So he has, before the relationship, he didn't have to worry about that. Now, you know, Stutz has Parkinson's disease. Stutz will eventually pass away, right? He will eventually die. And Hill will be left with this as something that he has to kind of contend with. The patient is now sort of dependent on his teachings, his engagement, you know, his weekly sessions. How is that going to play out in the future? I don't really have the answer. I can't say like it will be terrible or it will be perfect or whatever. I can say that it's a little concerning because again, he's not just his therapist, he's his friend. And the goal of any good therapist should be to teach our patients to become their own therapist. That's my feeling. When I work with a patient, I'm working with a patient with the goal of helping them to eventually be able to deliver their own therapy, to apply the techniques and skills learned in the sessions that we're working on in their own life, no matter what the circumstances. That's the ultimate goal. You become your own therapist. So the therapist is there to help guide the work. The therapist is there to, to, to be that warm, empathetic individual listening. But you want to allow the patient to take control of their own lives. And I don't want any patients to be dependent on my ability to be their therapist to get them through difficult situations. So it may seem in this video that I have a lot of criticisms of Stutz and Jonah Hill and the type of therapy and relationship they have. But in the end, I really like Stutz. I think he's a great guy. I think he's a genuine guy. And I think he really means and believes in everything that he's saying and doing, which I can really get behind, regardless of whether or not I believe his stuff is scientifically validated or really all that helpful or different than what is already out there in the therapy landscape. I do believe that people could benefit from this approach. And again, it will depend on the individual and the type of therapist that you're working with. And not everybody's going to have access to an amazing therapist like Phil Stutz, right? And like some of us are going to have to settle for people who aren't as talented, who aren't as charismatic, right? Who don't, who don't have that relationship building skill that he clearly has. However, the main benefit would not come from the tools that an individual like that is teaching because they are largely similar to other techniques we've seen elsewhere. What you would get if you choose to do this kind of therapy with a therapist that performs these type of techniques, you would get a warm, empathetic, and charismatic listener with some good advice. And if you're willing to take that advice, it might just change your life. So you don't know. There could work for some people. After all, in my mind, maybe that's really what we're all after anyway. That's where the real magic of therapy lies. It lies in that therapeutic alliance and the relationship we have with the therapist.